Hey, what's up guys? John Stayskull here. So I often get emails and messages on Discord asking me essentially, how do you get good? How do you find proficiency in your chosen uh, field in this context, game development and programming? I want to address the core of this so that hopefully I can point you in a direction in your own um, careers where you never have to really ask this question again. So let's get into it. So how does anything get good? Well, it's all about iteration. Take a product, like a, you know, a toothbrush or a car. The first versions, the first consumer versions of these products are always very crude and not very good. And then each new version that comes out after that will be an iteration of the last based on consumer feedback to the point where it's completely fine-tuned. You know, you have toothbrushes with rubber grips that um, perfectly fit to your hand, you know, and cars are like, wow, look at the iteration process we've seen in the past hundred years for, for vehicles, it's, it's insane. So just like that, humans also need to iterate, learning from failures and mistakes and improving. And as you know, some people never really learn, right? And they don't learn from their mistakes and they're caught in this loop of just making the same mistakes over and over again. And this loop can often lead to a you know downward spiral. And sometimes we need to go all the way down to the bottom and hit the bottom just so we can propel off it, you know? So I tell you this, just not be too hard on yourself depending on where you are in this process. There is hope and you know, you can pull back out of it and turn this spiral the other way and flip all the way to the top. Everything in this material world is sort of contrasted with something else. Say you have two items, item A and item B. The value, the perceived value of object A can only be determined by contrasting it against object B. But with that said, we should be very careful in using such a metric to determine our own progress, comparing ourselves to others. Because everyone is on their own life's journey. To look at what someone else is doing can be inspiring and aspirational, but also quite demoralizing, which is exactly where haters come from. You know, they look at um, the productive things someone else is doing um, kind of in their line and they see someone accomplishing the things they would like to be accomplishing. So they hate, they sit back and hate. That's um, a typical kind of symptom. So avoid that pitfall. Instead, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, a month ago, a year ago. That is your best metric for determining if you have made progress or not. And realizing that progress is not always a linear path forward. It can have branching paths, it can have oblique and different directions, and sometimes you even have to go backwards to go forwards. When I started this journey many years ago, I sucked at art, I sucked at coding, I sucked at a lot of things, but I had passion and I knew from an early age that I wanted to create things, but I didn't quite know what it is that I would be creating. Although I played a lot of games and I had an inkling that I would be in fact a game developer long before I even knew that it was even a thing. With passion and determination, you can achieve almost anything. And I say almost here because we just want to keep one foot grounded in reality as well. You know, the game of life is a, a tough one at times and we are dealt the cards we are dealt and sometimes we have to operate within a band of what is possible and you know we can really push those limits but um, it is what it is sometimes but we we have to find those limits and we have to push hard against them for all of you watching even myself we haven't even tapped into what we are actually capable of the real true limits of what our species is capable of you know humans are a miraculous species we are the most interesting and vibrant thing that has ever walked this planet and you are one of this miraculous species, so never sell yourself short. You have so much more um, available in your uh, repository and well of, of potential than, than you really realize, and, and please do believe that. But as the driver of your own experience, it can be hard to often see where you are when you're in the middle of the desert. And you can easily find yourself going in circles, kind of missing the goal or whatever it is. But that's largely because you 
may not even have a goal and you need a target to shoot for. This is so important, so please pay attention to this. Because an arrow without a target is going to be shot in essentially in a random direction and it will land where it will land. Sometimes you might get lucky, but more often than not you will get unlucky and sometimes very, very unlucky. So it's your responsibility to um, choose a goal and find a target and aim for it because you take that target away, what are you aiming for? You're just being pushed around by life like a piece of uh, driftwood in the ocean moved by the tides of, of, of life. And you don't want to be that. You don't want to get pushed around by life. You want to be standing on this piece of wood and surfing the waves of life, going in the general direction that you want to go. You need to look at it logically. You need to say, okay, so I want to become a successful game developer or programmer or whatever. How do I do that? What is the plan? I don't know how to code. Okay, I need to learn. I don't know how to do art. Okay, I need to learn. It's as simple as that. Discipline being a huge part of this. You know, the books won't read themselves. Well, maybe audio books, but they won't listen to themselves. You know, and the code won't write itself. The games will not ship themselves. This is all up to you and nobody's going to do it for you. So stop being the passenger in your own life. Become the driver. Get your ass out of the back seat. Take control of the steering wheel and choose where you want to go and go for it. And it's very easy to get caught in this loop of just preparing, preparing forever and never taking action. You know, that's a, that's a problem as well. At some point, you need to actually take the steps because we don't actually learn until we take the steps. The, the, the research and preparation it will only take us so far. Because until we take action, it's all just abstract in our head. Um, so open up Unity, open up Godot, open up Unreal, and just start pressing buttons, you know. Look around and uh, just get your brain to start absorbing the landscape. And then after that, you know, bring in like a, sh uh, a square or a um, circle sprite or just like a simple shape and start working out different ways to manipulate this uh, shape how to make it move left, how to make it move right, how to click it, how to make it scale up, how to make it scale down. These kind of things I described to you now are pretty much the, the, the pillars and foundations of, you know, most games. I mean, look at Mario. What is it? It's just a, an, an object moving left or right, essentially, and sometimes kind of uh, jumping or, you know, changing color depending on different kind of environmental um, situations. Then you move on to the next level of proficiency or detail, you know, the, the higher level up, wherever it be, the more complex APIs or some of the more complex programming um, uh, architectural things or whatever. But it's important that you keep your focus narrow. Focus on one thing at a time and focus on it with all your attention. And I found that a lot of beginners, they try to absorb too much information at one time. And this is a big problem. And it leads to kind of mental fatigue and burnout. Um, because if you take, if you bite off more than you can chew, essentially, then your, your brain just gets overloaded and you get frustrated, you get frustrated, you don't know what to do next. And then it all kind of unravels. Only eat as much as you can. Well, let me find a better way to analogize this. Only eat I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Don't eat more than you can digest. <laughs> I think it's also important to get some understanding of how your own brain works. What makes you tick? And what are the optimal conditions for you to be productive and creative, you know? And I found, at least for myself, if I eat some disgusting pizza with whatever on it. I've had some pretty gnarly pizzas lately, but you know, or that, or if I eat like too much sugar then, or too much caffeine even, then these things can really detract from my productivity uh, or creativity or just my, my will to even do these things. I just want to sit and watch TV, you know? So I kind of know that if I want to do something interesting, productive, and I want to learn something, I kind of have to stay away from certain things. And I think it's important to determine what those things are in your own life. And you see a lot of these, um, Individuals like, you know, The Rock, these elite kind of athletes or, or, or personalities or Jocko Willick, which is like a he's like a, mi a military general. They all get up at 5 a.m. and they just start like grinding when their brain is a clean, fresh slate, uncorrupted by the noise 
of the world. And that's kind of an interesting way to approach it. But I believe in that. I, I, I believe that um, just observing um, information that is that is not relevant to what we're trying to do can be quite fatiguing. And if you're, you know, on Facebook all day or Instagram or even YouTube, just watching other people's lives, that's going to be quite draining on you. And by the time you're done with that, you may not have so much juice left to pursue your own things. So be careful with that, all in moderation, right? The people wondering how to get good feel compelled often to ask this question because they are not driving the car and they have no control over it. It's like an Uber driver taking you to a mystery location and you're like, where are we going, man? Where are we going? You know, but once you're driving, you don't feel compelled to ask this question because you have the control. You say, oh, I want to go over there. I, I want to learn game dev. I want to learn programming. I'm going to go there because I know the kind of um, the way to go about it. And it's not about these kind of specific steps. The steps are irrelevant because these steps are going to change for all the different things you try to accomplish in your life. So you can't have a one to a perfect formula for everything, but you need to adjust yourself. You have to have that foundation to be able to adapt and learn anything. And I kind of, I'm at a point in my life where I feel like I can learn anything, you know, um, obviously, you know, we all have our limitations. We've got to be kind of realistic too, but um, I've, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to try everything with the confidence that if I continue at it and I, I learn and I focus in on narrow aspects of the skill, then over time I can add more to it and then more to it and more to it. So stop wondering how to go about it and being consumed by choice paralysis and maybe just start acting, you know, take a step. Even if the step is wrong, that doesn't matter because at least you know that's not the right direction and you can step again. And eventually with enough steps, the path forward will reveal itself. So even when you fail, you still win. And that's the pretty awesome thing about it. So don't be scared to step wrong or incorrectly. Don't be afraid. Don't feel you need to ask somebody first before you take that step. Just do it and see where it leads. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing. This is not life or death. You have no reason to, to fear taking a step. It's your own ego playing tricks on you, basically, you know, where you, you, you don't want to feel like you made a mistake. But that's the kind of the, the secret that all the successful people in this world have worked out is that the more mistakes you make, the clearer the path to success is. And I want you to think about that. And finally, don't let the process of getting good, which I've described, only apply to your professional skills. Apply them to your mind, your body, your relationships and other aspects of your life. Read more books, play less games, or at least play in moderation and get off social media. If you're still scrolling through Instagram, you know, um, voyeuristically looking at other people's lives and fixated on them, well, you, you might want to stop doing that because that is definitely not taking you anywhere um, uh, positive in your life. Uh, I'll tell you that now. So I'll end by saying, just try to also generally get good as a human being. Um, be kinder to the people and uh, things around you. The world is at a kind of interesting crossroads at the moment. You know, society is kind of unraveling around the world. So I think we need as much positivity and, and people being kind to each other as, as we possibly can. Which is kind of why I do this um, channel where I can kind of um, educate you guys who are coming up, kind of walking the path that I walked a few years ago and kind of help you to guide you to kind of where I am now, which is at a place where I feel quite happy. You know, I'm, I'm content. Um, I get to uh, work with uh, on making games. I'm making my own game, Blood and Mead. Um, if you guys, by the way, want to check that out or wish list it and kind of help support <laughs> that game <laughs> from becoming an absolute um, a disaster at launch, then um, I'll be very uh, thankful if you gave it a wish list. I'll put a, a link down below. And also, I wanted to quickly thank all the Patreon supporters who have been supporting this um, channel. It means a lot. My Patreon supporters have been my rock and essentially keeping this channel afloat. Um, so I thank you guys for doing that and I'll continue making good content as a result. All right, guys, all the best. Good luck in your game of adventures and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.